Welcome back. So I have a question. Why do people find this? So much more unnerving than this. Or better yet, why do we find the forests of San Andreas or the oceans of Mario 64 to be so eerie? Let's take a deeper look at all of this and more as we dive into the horrors of low poly gaming. So first of all, let's talk about the atmosphere in these games. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big talking point for me because this is one of the many things that all of these games have in common with each other. And I'm specifically talking about like stretched out textures, barren environments, background pictures that seem to stretch on forever. Uh, these all sound like bad things, right? Actually, these are some of the things that make them so unnerving to us whether that be intentional or unintentional. And not even just in horror game. This happens in the most innocent games you can think of, like Mario 64, for example. So let's rewind. Let's go back in time a little bit to June 23rd, 1996. It's a nice summer day. The birds are chirping. Uh, that little buzzy bug, <laughs> he's doing his thing. You can smell the freshly cut grass. But none of that matters, because today is the day that Mario 64 releases. You go out to the store, you get the last copy, you run home, you boot up your N64, put in the game, and you're greeted with this. <laughs> Actually, just kidding, you're greeted with this. Here we are! Palace doors! Now, I'm not trying to bash on Mario 64. I really can't. It, it was literally a, a revolutionary game. That's not my point. My point is the fact that the maps feel very empty, very desolate, and a very, like, surreal feeling, honestly. Um, and there's not a lot that's explained about the game. Which, yes, it's a Mario game, you know? On the surface level, you don't really need to explain much. But if you think a little deeper about it, you start to think like, why is the castle so empty? Why is there only a few toads sprinkled around? Why do all the cannons have question marks on them? Um, why is this the only chain chomp in the whole game? Why did this eel feel the need to traumatize our entire generation? Um, who, who is this creepy face at the end of the game? Uh, there's just a lot left unexplained. Kind of makes you focus in on the small details that you do get, and that's where your brain kind of fills in its own little details, even where they don't need to be, which is where the creepy factor kind of comes into play. And the, the castle being so empty, it almost it feels like something really bad had happened. You almost get the feeling it's like you're being watched. This isn't the only non-horror game that this happens with, though. This happens with a GTA, San Andreas specifically, Minecraft, The Legend of Zelda, and many more. But especially now where our brains are so used to like high definition 4K graphics in contrast to these old school games where everything is kind of stretched out and blurry and I think us being so used to these like perfect polished games it makes them just a little bit more creepy. And I think that that gives them honestly a much better atmosphere than most of these newer horror games that have come out. Um, I think another really special thing about these games is the nostalgia part of them. Especially Mario 64, I mean we all remember playing that game for the first time. Same with Minecraft and all the games I mentioned before. Um, but with nostalgia, I think we all like to look back on these fond memories with sort of like rose tinted glasses. But sometimes if we just kind of pull the glasses down a little bit, just... Oh, put them back on, put them back on. We kind of see everything a little bit differently. Where all this nostalgia and kind of creep factor mixed together also ties into the liminal space horror that's been uh, kind of on the rise recently, which I think is very cool. There's something so creepy about uh, something that is supposed to be so innocent. There's just something off about it. Something's wrong. Like a room that's just a little bit too empty or a little bit too bland. It kind of gives you the creeps. This ties pretty well into the uncanny valley, which I actually have a full video on. If you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link on the screen or in the description somewhere. But yes, everything I've mentioned before definitely falls into the Uncanny Valley. Um, and this is kind of where we get things like the back rooms, um, uh, which is like a liminal space that feels very familiar. A lot of people feel like they've been there before. It almost feels a little bit nostalgic in a way. But once again, there's something, there's a little sprinkle of uneasiness in there. A space that feels almost real, but there's something a little bit off about it. And I think all of this really just comes down to the fear of the unknown. And I think, going back to uh, low poly games, this is best shown in Silent Hill, which is yet another revolutionary video game. Um, Silent Hill is known for a lot of things. The few main things being, uh, one, the atmosphere, two, the graphics, 
three, the sound design, and four, the fog. The fourth being arguably the most recognizable. The fact that you don't know what's just beyond your field of vision is like very unnerving. And this was actually expertly done for a lot of reasons. I know obviously to add to the atmosphere, of course, but it was also to make the world feel a little bit bigger, but also mainly to reduce the lag, uh, kind of just due to like the game system limitations at the time. But it really only added to the game experience. This is also perfectly shown in GTA San Andreas that spawned so many uh, the conspiracy theories and what lay in like the forests and the oceans. People claim to have seen Bigfoot, they saw ghosts, aliens, you name it. People have seen it, apparently, in GTA San Andreas. But that's what makes it so much fun, I think, is um, the mystery of it all. And you get a lot of that with these low poly games, just because the atmosphere is just so, so good. Um, but we don't get much of this with uh, modern mainstream horror games anyways. And I'm not necessarily saying that they're bad by any means, but there's just not as much mystery anymore. Um, you know, with people well, for one, being able to get into games codes so easily, which is not much of a thing back in the day. Everything, all the graphics nowadays being so perfect and really, really very detailed, everything kind of gets handed to you on like a 4K <laughs> HD plate, if you know what I mean. So there's just not a lot of room for mystery. And well, yes, the influence of these types of games, especially Silent Hill, being uh, shown in the rise of like indie horror games with a, you know, PlayStation graphics, the whole VHS found footage indie game style becoming very, very popular nowadays. I think they honestly, they show more in this liminal space horror trend that's coming up. I mean, I look at the back rooms and I see <laughs> like a PS1 video game. There actually are games being made about the back rooms, so I'm definitely not alone with that. Um, but I definitely do hope to see this trend continue and kind of grow because I love the feeling of uh, being kind of uneasy and once again the fear of the unknown. I think it. I think it's really cool. I I really enjoy it both in video games and film. It's a new movie coming out. I think it's called like Skinema Rink or something. Apparently that's really good. Apparently that that's a bit of a like a liminal space movie, but I, I'm really into the subtle horror of it all, intentional or unintentional. Yeah, and I think it's kind of just bringing back a feeling that a lot of us haven't felt ever since. But yeah, so to wrap it up, we talked about the atmosphere of, of these old games, a little bit of the reasoning behind the creepiness of it all, and the link to um, modern horror games, modern films, modern um, online stories between these old low poly games and their effect on the horror community to this day. Um, thank you guys so much for watching once again. This was a fun one. I'm, I'm really into all this uh, low poly like found footage VHS type of horror. I think it's really fun. Um, speaking of which, I think I might have a few gameplays coming up. I definitely want to do some gameplays with friends of uh, horror games that we haven't seen yet. Most likely we'll be playing some very similar games to the ones that I talked about today. So look out for that. I think I want to set a schedule. I want to try to upload a new horror themed video every Friday. And I was thinking every Tuesday, uh, maybe I'll do like a fun like vlog or a gameplay or something like that. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, and please, if you enjoyed the video, you know, drop a like, a comment, maybe a subscription. It takes two seconds and it just shows that you enjoyed the video, which I really love to see. And I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting lately. And I will see you next time.